Hey, welcome to Mind Boggles. Hope you enjoyed uh, some of our shows in the past. We talked about how the mind works. That's kind of our main topic. And how you can get the mind to work for you rather than against you. That's kind of the fundamental piece here. And I take the position that you have a mind to use, but you are not your mind. You just have one. And sometimes when you let it run wild, it'll get you in all kinds of trouble. You end up saying the wrong things at the wrong time, or you have habits. In the middle of it, you're going, how did I get to the bottom of this bag of potato chips? Or why am I yelling at my, my ex-wife again? I didn't want to do this. Well, the game uh, that makes the most sense for me is learning how my mind works so I can begin to first calm it, then direct it. Right? Well, one of the mechanics that you might enjoy is learning how the mind works regarding the ten senses. Now normally we consider that we have five senses. We have touch, taste, feel, smell, whatever, the five senses. Vision, auditory, feelings, smell, and taste. Those are the five physical senses. Let me be very clear about that. We have those same senses mentally, right? For example, right now with your physical eyes you're watching television. But if you pause for a second, go inside, you can see in your mind the color of car that you drive, right? That would be mental vision. You can hear the sound coming over the television, you know, or someone talking to you, or the popcorn that's popping, whatever. You can hear with your physical ears. If you pause for a second, go inside your mind, you can hear the sound of your mother's voice, what that sounds like, right? That'd be mental hearing. Uh, feel, perhaps you're sitting on the couch or you can feel your shoes that are on your feet you know, or your shirt, you can feel that. Uh, but if you pause for a second, go inside your mind, you can feel the pillow that you sleep on, yes? Smell and taste are also in there, but most of us in our uh, culture, in the American culture, don't put a lot of emphasis on smell or taste. We don't normally think in smell or taste. Some people do, but not many. Mostly, we think in words, pictures, or feelings. So, so what? Well, the benefit of this is noticing the qualities of these ten senses. The physical senses, for example, the five physical, physical senses are always right now. They're in the now, right? The mental senses are always in the past or future. So what? Well, notice how you create stress. Stress almost always is when you think in the future or the past, you picture disaster coming at you, or you picture how a disaster happened in the past, you don't want to repeat it. Or you talk to yourself about the future, or you talk to yourself about, gosh, I hope it wasn't as bad as it was when I was a kid. But those two are internal vision, internal auditory, talking to yourself, those two are the ones that usually create the real stress in our life. So what? Well, if we look, for example, at overeating, overdrinking, oversmoking, what happens when you're stressed, you're in internal vision or internal auditory, going in the past or future? All of a sudden you decide, I, am, I gotta take a break, I'm really strung out here. People normally will get up, go down to the snack bar, get something to eat, They'll sit down in the chair, make themselves comfortable. Their jaw will be chewing, so it's relaxed the jaw. In the middle of their eating, they'll go, oh, wow, just in time, right? And they're doing those first three levels of very natural relaxation. And now the sense of touch and taste and smell right now eating that candy bar takes precedent. So internal vision, internal auditory disappear. You get out of the past and future you come to the present to taste the candy bar. Yes? Same thing with smoking. Same thing with drinking. Let's say you, you, you had a tough day at work, you can't wait for the five o'clock bell to ring, man, you hop in your pickup truck, you zip down to the bar, you find yourself a nice comfortable stool, you make yourself comfortable, order your beer, you take the beer, open your jaw wide, relax your jaw, set it down, tough day at work. You slow your breathing, and for a while, the same thing. You go through those first three levels of natural relaxation by making yourself comfortable, relaxing your jaw, slowing your breathing, and you move to the sense of taste, in this case, taste of beer, or the coolness of the glass. But you come to the now, and 
tension and stress disappears. You with me? The qualities of how you think is where the gold is. That's where the power is. It's not in the beer. It's not in the Fritos. It's not eating and drinking and smoking. No, no. That is simply a way to bring yourself into the present. Uh, another classic way is you go jogging. You jog Hollingsworth Lake or you, you go to the gym, Gold's Gym, and you work out. You bring your mind to the now, right here, right now, and stress disappears. Right? Uh, when I had a hypnotherapy practice a long time ago, um, if I'm doing work with really difficult um, situations, imminent death, uh, chronic pain, stuff that's really heavy, man, I know I have to get to the gym and work out. I've got to run, I've got to go hit baseballs and the, the batting cage, something, because I know I need to come to the here and now to blow off all of the tension that I build up thinking about the past and future. Make sense? Well, how can we apply this more directly to your life? Um, one of the things you might consider is success. How do people become successful and how do they fail? Well, if we use the idea of the ten senses, normally speaking, your internal vision times your internal auditory times your internal feelings will result in the success or failure. For example, um, when I was teaching at Florida Southern, and we talked about this in class, Let's say you have uh, someone who's going to school and they really want to own a tire store. Man, they can picture it, they can see it. They talk to themselves, yeah, I'm going to own that tire store like my Uncle Fred, yes. But the third element of internal feeling, they have no passion, they have no energy, they don't have any drive, it doesn't happen. It's just all talk. Other people, they have the self-talk, I can do this, I know I can do this, they have the passion, but they don't have the internal vision. They don't know really what they want, so they bang into things, they change the majors all the time. They don't have a career that sticks, they keep bouncing from one thing to another because they don't have the clear picture internally of that's what I want to do and there's what I want to go. Other people have the clear picture, they have the passion, but they have the self-talk that says, oh, you know, I'll never be able to do that. Nobody in my family has ever graduated from college. Or, I couldn't, I'm too old, or I'm the wrong color, or my ears are too big, whatever. They talk themselves out of it, right? So nothing really happens. The idea is you get the vision of what you want. That's the tough part, by the way. You have the internal dialogue. I can do this. I know I can do this. I can do this. And you talk to yourself about it with those kind of strong terms, and you build a passion behind it. It tends to happen to you. It does. It just flat tends to happen to you but you've got to have all three kind of lined up. The trick is trying to find out what you truly want. Truly want. Uh, there's a lot of us, sometimes in your life, you, you do what your parents think you should do, or what you, uh, friends of yours had a particular drive and they made some money, so you think, well, I'll do that. But trying to figure out what is it I truly, truly want. That's a trick. There's a Sufi master, Sufis being of the Islam, right? A Sufi master named Meir Baba, uh, he said, the first thing we con you should consider is your heart. What do you truly want? Right? Once you figure that out, number two, it's your head's job to figure out, figure out how to get it. Well, I don't know about you, but I tend to put my head first most of my life. Like, it made sense, it was, in it was intellectually powerful, that's what I should be doing. Uh, but the heart really is where the power is. When you find that's what I want, that's the way I'm going to contribute to society, or that's what I want on my tombstone, or boy, if I could do that in my life, life would be really great. Then, second, the head's job. Now what do I need to do to do that? Do I need to take a class in accounting? Do I need to have background information in IT? Those are secondary things. The head is secondary. The heart is primary, right? Anyway, uh, the ten senses, as you look and study this, you might notice there's certain qualities that you have that maybe other people don't have. Because none of us think the same. We all think completely differently, and that's hard to imagine. 
Uh, but everyone thinks differently. For example, uh, my second wife, and I've had three, I have a lovely life, wife now, Sheila, she's terrific. My second wife thought in words exclusively. I think in pictures. So it's like French and German. We just never could connect. Yeah? So the idea is how can I adjust and realize, okay, this person I'm working with thinks in words. I've got to really pay attention to my words because she'll remember these words 25 years from now. She'll be able to quote me. <laughs> and I tend to play with words. So that wasn't working. So I got to shift to say, this person thinks in words. Let me pay extra attention to communicate with her. Now, if she wanted to com communicate with me, uh, she might want to speak in pictures. Can you see this? Picture that, right? My daughter, who understood how I thought, uh, she'd write me little uh, yellow stickies. Put this in your notebook, pop, bam. It goes in my notebook. I see it. I've got it. Uh, someone says something to me. I'm searching for my notebook to write it down in my appointment book, right? Because uh, the words pass through me. That's how I think. Well, you notice how you think, how your partners think, how your kids think. We all are processing stuff differently. Not right, not wrong, just differently. So as you understand the 10 senses, you realize there's a lot more happening here. It's like the technology of thinking. You realize this person thinks in feelings, this person thinks in words, this person thinks in pictures, right? And those are kind of the three qualities that we begin with. Then it gets much more intricate as you get into this whole thing. Anyway, the 10 senses uh, is something you might consider. And notice a practical thing. Uh, the next time you find yourself really stressed about something, st stop and go inside and say, well, how am I creating the stress? The world isn't doing it. I'm doing it. I take responsibility for creating stress. Nobody else. It's me. Notice, well, am I doing it by talking to myself? Classically, when you talk to yourself, oh my God, it's going to be such a bad day. I got a feeling. Then you start talking faster and faster and faster. Pretty soon you're really strung out. If you find yourself creating stress by talking to yourself, try talking to yourself slower and kinder and more gently. And notice what happens to the stress. Right? It will tend to disappear. Right? If you think in pictures, you find yourself, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about this picture in the future that's a disastrous scenario. Notice the picture. Notice if it's a still picture or is it a moving picture like a film or a video. Is it black and white or is it in color? You start to change the qualities. You change it to black and white, you change it to color, change the size of it. Sometimes the picture is enormous because it's like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Make it small, like a, like a postage stamp. And sometimes you'll just feel the stress just go away. You're creating the stress. You can also create the peace. Yeah. Anyway, mind boggles. Hope you enjoyed uh, the 10 senses today. Uh, take care of yourself. Also, today, if you can find some way to take care of somebody else, pass on some kindness, that would be great. Anyway, see you later.